All right, welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We got a fun one today, but let's first talk about what is Harmonious. Why are we here? It is the disruptive way to look at your business. It is the context for the surplus of content that is going on in the world. We're going to filter our conversations through the lens of the business architecture you need to run and scale your business. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about outside of business, the three-legged stool, mind, body, and business. We're going to touch all three areas. I have a, an amazing guest, a super fun conversation lined up. So first and foremost, let me welcome Dr. Christina to the show. Welcome. Good to have you here. Thank you so much. And I am really excited to be here. Thank you for connecting with me in that amazing podcast group. And I just love what you're doing. I can't wait to learn more throughout the episode. Yeah, no, this is fun. Shout out to the to that group. I actually yes. work with them closely. Uh, <laughs> Jamie and Angel, they've been fantastic. So shout out to them. Yep. Um, but yeah, so let's let's dive in here. So before we started recording, um, I think you told me you had a past career as a drug dealer. Did I do that right? <laughs> You see, you you know my personality. You know we can joke already. Yeah, so I was a pharmacist. <laughs> oh, that's what you said. That's totally my fault. Okay. <laughs> yeah, for, for many, many years. Um, yes, I gave pills away <laughs> legally, legal drug dealer. Um, yeah, and I transitioned out of pharmacy. I was really burnt out and was working 12-hour shifts, you know, back to back. And I knew in my heart that I wanted to really help people heal. So I transitioned out of pharmacy completely five years ago and went into full-time entrepreneurship. So now I do holistic healing and transformation work, as well as practical business strategy to help entrepreneurs to show up and shine to scale your profitable healing business. So that is my passion. That's what I do. I love that. And I, I love that you can joke about it too, but I, I also hear that you found your passion through that career and you always at the core, you wanted to help people, whether it was through being yeah. a pharmacist or now coaching and consulting business owners. So that's awesome. Um, so tell me a little bit, how do you, how do you help people in the way of uh, natural healing and, and coaching? What is it that you do for entrepreneurs yeah. these days? Yeah, absolutely. So um, just a, a quick story about why I do this work. It's mm -hmm. because I've been through my own transformation. I had a lot of trauma growing up. And as a result, my body held all of that trauma and it manifested as an eating disorder, a rare eating disorder called night eating syndrome. So I had um, anxiety, PTSD, depression, and what I was taught in pharmacy school didn't add up it didn't make sense of why I was experiencing all these symptoms because what I was taught was that disease comes from lifestyle choices, um, genetics, all of these other things. And so it led me down this path of my own healing and my own dis, dis ease to discover what it meant to truly heal. And so I did so much research. I'm a huge nerd <laughs> and I, took trainings and certifications and went to like Tony Robbins retreats and all of this personal development that ultimately led, ultimately led me down this path to know that a lot of business really comes down to the energy that you and, and the confidence of how you're showing up and how you're owning your gifts. Because I was dimming my light for so long. I was very suppressed. Um, I didn't have the confidence. I actually had really low self-esteem and as a result, when I started to ha have my business, it showed up all of these different patterns of perfectionism, people pleasing, unworthiness. And so when I went to go have a sales call, as an example, I would sabotage it because I unconsciously didn't believe that I was worthy of receiving that, that, that money. And I felt guilty. I'm like, oh, I'm taking from people. So all of these subtle energetic um, frequencies that we hold in our body like you talked about mind, body, business. I love that. It translated into the results I saw directly in my business. So now that's the work that I do. So I do both the inner uh, healing and shifts. I do hypnosis. I use a lot of different transformation tools, nervous system work, um, energy work, <clears throat> as well as practical business strategy to help entrepreneurs to really show up and shine. Because I think that it's so easy to kind of um, downplay our strengths, or I meet a lot of people that say, oh, like, I don't have anything to give, like, so and so is doing this already. So I think there's a lot of that inner battle that people have. So I help them to 
essentially release a lot of those blocks and barriers and blind spots holding them back so that they can scale a profitable, impactful business. Because you can have the best product in the world, but if no one knows where to find it or, or who you are, it's going to be really difficult for them to actually buy from you. So that's kind of my my magic and my blend is the inner energetic work, but also practical strategy. I absolutely love that. And it, it's conversations like these where I just so regret making these episodes 20 minutes long because I, I <laughs> love this topic. Let's and do a I, follow can, up. <laughs> I know, right? Okay. We're, we're saying that now five minutes in, there will be a follow up conversation to this because I, I love this. It's so crucial. And it's a, it's a similar path to what I realized was important in my business career. Yeah. Um, and that's why, that's why it is the three legged stool. And I had this conversation last week with um, a, a group of guys and what you what you focus on, you get more of, which is just a piece of what you're talking about. Right. But I, I also understand how all of this plays together and the energy you show up with affects your outcome and affects what's happening in your world. So right. then tell me when you start working with somebody at, well, but even before that, how should somebody identify in themselves that they need to work with somebody like right. you? Because that I think is the biggest barrier that we're just so blindsided. I love it. Such a great question. And I want to just say you're you're an awesome interviewer because <laughs> you're asking these really deep questions and it's perfect. Um, if someone is doing all the strategy and they're finding themselves looping and they're doing all this effort, but they're not seeing the that they're attracting consistent clients, there's something usually I call it a blind spot. So it could be I have I use five profit pillars in my uh, framework of, of how I coach people. And one of them is energy. And so a lot of times people are not realizing that they're doing a launch, they're doing all the right steps. You know, I work with a lot of uh, type A people who are like, I'm doing all the steps, right? And, but they're not seeing the result because they're unconsciously sabotaging whenever they're going to pitch their program. They're like, oh, the energy is, because I'm very intuitive. So I, I kind of can feel, I have them practice with me. And they're like, the energy is, oh, hey, here's my my program, but it's okay if you can't afford it. So it's like this repelling energy of, hey, I want to help you. But then unconsciously, there's like, again, maybe a belief of I don't want to take from people or I don't feel worthy to receive this. And so they undercharge, they over deliver. There are all of these um, patterns that are as a result of this core wound of unworthiness or guilt or whatever's lacing their business that they're not seeing because they're so close to their business. And they're just thinking, hey, I need this strategy. And so that's where I can come in and help them shift internally with these different transformation tools um, and really just loving people for where they're at because it all makes sense. Your body's trying to protect you. That's why you're doing this dance of like self-sabotage because your body's trying to stay safe because some past experience showed you there was a negative consequence when you did X, Y, Z, but it's so unconscious that it's not translating to them and they can't see it. So I come in and I can quickly identify, Hey, this is what's showing up for you. Let's hold this with compassion. Let's shift this and help you to, um, you know, get paid abundantly for your gifts. Cause that's why, you know, that's, it's the energetic exchange of like, Hey, I have this solution for you. Um, but again, if, if, if you can't suc successfully close that client, you can't really help them. So, yeah. Yeah. It's that balance, right? It's like, I, I want to help you. I don't want to hurt you, but it ultimately stems from within. So then without giving away the secret sauce, can you <laughs> help me understand a little bit? What does that process of transformation look like? It, I, it sounds like you start with analyzing some past wounds or traumas or yeah. life experiences. Where do, Where do you go from there? Yeah. So like, as an example, I just did a, a workshop last week and I could feel in this woman's throat, I don't ask me how, I, I guess, cause I'm so intuitive and I could just feel the energy um, because I'm so highly sensitive. That's one of my gifts. I could feel in her throat. I'm like, what is this emotion in your throat that is wanting to be moved? Because when we suppress, when we don't allow that energy to move through and um, express, if we're like um, holding things in or suppressing, then it's going to block our creative flow of being able to clearly speak your truth or whatever that might be. So I felt it and I went there right away. My intuition was like, go there. And I, and she started crying and she's like, it's fear, it's control. And so I just kind of go where I'm led 
what the top priority is um, that I'm being shown, as well as obviously like the practical pieces of, okay, how is this net then translating to blocks in your business? So if you're holding on to fear and control in your throat, you're probably not speaking your truth. You're not showing up authentically because you're afraid of some negative consequence. So we bring all of that to the light with compassion. And then I have them declare, like, what is the new outcome that you want to create? So there's many, I call it multi-dimensional healing, but essentially that's where I start is like where I'm being shown that block is for them. And then we move forward from there and then they feel a sense of relief. Like a lot of people will say, wow, I feel light. I feel um, more like myself because that's really what people want. They want to be self-expressive. They want to be loved for who they are, even through your business. So I think that that's a huge part of it is shifting um, whatever this block or fear or barrier is so that they can allow that flow of creativity, of critical thinking so that they can call in those clients who are meant to work with them. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. I know I, I go love, deep. <laughs> no, I, I love it because again, I could, I could nerd out about this stuff all day long. I think this is, it's such an important conversation. And well, for the reason that I'm, I'm going to ask you this next question about this popped up in my head when, as you were talking, so you go through the transformation, someone experiences change, they see the light, they have the aha. Here's what frustrates me about, um, I've been to Tony Robbins events, several of them. I've been to other personal development ev events and there tends to be these people who they stand up and they have the same story every single event and year after year, month after month, whatever they experience the change in the moment, but it doesn't last. So mm -hmm. Can you talk to me about how to create and sustain lasting change with a transformation like this? Because I think that's yeah. where the real magic comes in. I will tell you that there are layers to healing. Like I have an, I have an unworthiness wound. <laughs> like it comes up with every next level of my business because it's a protective part of me that is from a long time ago that I was, I my inner child made this story up of like, you have to work really hard in order to be accepted, to be loved, to be worthy. So a lot of it, if it's like a really deep root, it's going to require patience, compassion, and different layers of healing. And so I think it's, it's realizing that healing is not linear, like I'm healed, you know, and now I'm good. It's having compassion with yourself, but also realizing that a lot of the patterns we have now are stemming from very early programming from birth to age seven is when we get our foundational subconscious programming. And so I would say it's, first of all, it's a daily practice. I am constantly um, sitting in the frequency of, you know, meditation and um, in my desire of whatever that, that is in the moment, um, you know, and maybe it's like, Hey, I want to show up today um, from a heart centered place, it could be whatever, but like really training your brain because the brain is going to want to go back to the familiar. And so it's that it's like developing habits that work for you. And maybe you don't like meditation, but it's retraining your brain. Tony Robbins says, um, and I think it was from someone else, like stand guard at the gate of your mind or something like that. And it's truly guarding your thoughts because it's so easy to go back to the old ways of like, this is who I am and this is my identity. So I think it's that. Um, and it's also doing some of that deeper work because mindset work bypasses the trauma of um, the nervous system. And the nervous system is really where we hold all of our trauma. So again, I could talk about this for hours, but I think it's um, probably those two things. Yeah. So it sounds like, you know, it just instead of bypassing and shortcutting actually going deep and, and healing is the key. Yeah. And it's, it's hard work. So if, if yeah. anybody's listening and, and you're, you know, even doing like the, the surface level of this work, I want to honor you because it's, it could be challenging to look at your pain and look at your wounds. Um, but I, there's so much freedom and empowerment on the other side of it. So. Yeah, that's, that's a, an amazing message. And it's true. Unfortunately, it does take, I think you mentioned uh, patience. I don't know where you can buy that. I don't have any, maybe you can find <laughs> it on Amazon, but I, <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe if you have some patience, uh, no, that's, that's what's required. And that's an amazing message. Um, so I do real quick, I want to put your website on the screen. 
Um, and you have a couple of uh, freebies yeah. and downloads for people. So tell me about uh, what do you, what do you have on your website for people? Yeah, absolutely. So if you're just starting a business and you, I call it monetizing your magic and you're wanting to kind of have a, an easy, simple framework on how to create a signature offer, how to turn your gifts to gold, essentially, you can go and, and download that PDF. It's a beautiful PDF that I created. Um, and then there's also another one that I wanted to share. It's called Reignite Your Light, Simple Effective Burnout Prevention Strategies, where I share 13 different evidence-based uh, burnout prevention strategies to help you reduce levels of burnout and overwhelm in your business, which, you know, <laughs> we all um, can experience from time to time. So I'd love to give that to your audience. And I'm just so grateful for you that we connected and we are doing another episode because <laughs> this was too short. <laughs> we have to. We absolutely have to. Yeah. I was just going to say the topic of this episode or the title was supposed to be five ways to turn your gifts to gold. Um, I'm so glad we took a, a different direction and actually went deep on, on yeah. this inner healing work. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely have a second third and fifth episode because we could we could do this all day um this has been absolutely amazing so yeah if you want to please go grab those downloads i will if you're watching or listening they'll they'll be linked in the show notes um so you can go directly to that page and learn more about christina how she can help you um now let's tie this to the harmonious architecture real quick and then we'll wrap this yeah. episode up so we we obviously had talked a lot about the mind and the body and and healing the nervous system and healing your your inner trauma your past trauma that is so important, but ultimately what that stems down to in the harmonious architecture in the acronym is the I, inspire. If that's, that's your leadership as, as an entrepreneur and a business owner, whether you're a solopreneur, you have a team of 500, 5,000, you can't lead anybody, including yourself, if you're not right. And I always come back to that because I've seen time and time again, just like Christina said, if you sabotage yourself, your business will fail. As the leader, you're leading yourself your business, your team, and it is so important to be optimized and ready to show up for your people to fight that mission every single day. So, um, you know, we talked about how to identify these things in yourself. If you know that you're just, you're going from, from a cool thing to cool thing, from guru to guru, and you're just not seeing the results, maybe it's time to look within. And I think that's, that to me is the message um, that needs to come to light here because we're in, Christine, I'm sure you've seen it. We're in a hustle culture and we're in a culture of suppressing our emotions yeah. and just going and going and going. And I think the opposite is what needs to come to light. Your work needs to come to light because that's when true growth and explosive business growth really comes through. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I love the the I, the inspire because yeah, it, it, it comes down to your embodiment and your energy, your leadership energy. So beautiful. I love that. Awesome. All right. Well, we're going to wrap this up, but don't worry. We will have a follow-up episode at least with Dr. Christina. This is awesome. Where can we follow you on social media and follow your journey? Yeah, absolutely. So if you look, uh, find me on pretty much any social media platform, Christina Fontana, I'm on Instagram at the pharmacist coach. I'm on YouTube. Um, so connect with me wherever you, wherever your heart desires. <laughs> awesome. We will be sure to tag you everywhere we can. So please go follow Dr. Christina, learn more about this. Uh, this has been another fantastic episode of Harmonious at Lunch. I'm so excited to dive deeper next time, but we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for listening.